What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Tonight, I have your WWE Fastlane 2019 full show review and results. Of course, I'm going to go through every single match on the card, letting you guys know what happened, what my thoughts were, what I thought of the outcomes of the matches, where I think they're going in the future, and everything in between. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So starting things off with the pre-show, guys, we had the New Day taking on Rusev and Shinsuke Nakamura. Not sure why this match was even taking place. I really don't remember these guys feuding or anything. I just think they wanted to get everybody on the card like WWE likes to do. I didn't even see this matchup. I thought the pre-show started at 6. It started at 5, so I didn't miss this match. But the New Day did pick up the win, if anybody cares. But uh, yeah, why, why is Rusev and Shinsuke a team? I don't know. Should have stuck with Rusev Day with Aiden English and all that good stuff. That was great. But anyways, let's move on. So we started the main show of Fastlane with the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between the defending Usos taking on McMiz or the Besties or whatever the hell you want to call them. But this matchup had a lot of fire to it. You know, of course, Miz is the hometown hero here. He is from Cleveland where this pay-per-view took place. So the crowd was red hot for this. I enjoyed this match a lot, even though, you know, it wasn't anything spectacular out of the box, you know, but it was it was good stuff. I enjoyed it. It was a solid tag team effort here. The Usos do retain and it came when the Miz went up to the top rope. I think his, uh, his dad, George, was in the crowd and he said, you know, go, Miz, climb up top, whatever. So he climbs up top. He goes for like a splash. He got hit in the gut by either Jay or Jimmy rolled up for the three count and the Usos do retain. Nice little matchup here. After the match, Shane McMahon would proceed to beat the shit out of the Miz. Go into George Mazanin's face. He's like, this is your crappy son, whatever. Not really into a babyface Miz and I think it was cool to see Shane you know, show that aggression, but I think that the Miz is the heel would work way more. It would be way more believable and stuff like that, but uh, I enjoyed this matchup. I, I enjoyed the, the aggression that Shane McMahon showed and it's going to be interesting to see how his kill his heel persona is uh, effective in 2019. So let's move on. But the Usos do retain their SmackDown Live titles. And of course, we're getting a Shane McMahon versus Miz match at WrestleMania. Next up, we have the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match between my girl Asuka taking on Mandy Rose. And this matchup was not very good. You know, Asuka needs to be in the ring with some better competition. Mandy Rose, while getting better and better, of course, she had Sonya Deville at ringside with her. But uh, I don't know, man. She was botching. It, was, it wasn't it was very good. The story of this matchup was Sonya Deville, and she was, like, trying to get involved or thinking about getting involved. There was multiple times where she lifted up the apron, and it was like she was going to get some weapons to help Mandy, but then she didn't. And then she uh, to the end of the matchup came when she went to lift the apron, and Mandy Rose ends up slipping on the apron, taking a roundhouse kick to the face, and one, two, three... And I don't know, man. It was just really weird timing. It was awkward. It just wasn't very good stuff. But Asuka does win, thank God. And it looks like Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville are going to be leading to a breakup or tensions building between the two, given, you know, she uh, she accidentally made Mandy Rose lose, which I kind of like that booking. But if it were me booking it, I would have had Asuka just squash Mandy Rose. But, you know, that is, that is just my opinion on the matter. I want Asuka to have a high-level competitor going into Mania. She needs a good Mania matchup. And I don't know who the hell is going to take her play or take you know that that spot at mania but i guess we'll have to see but oscar does retain her championship so after that smackdown live women's championship match we cut backstage to kofi kingston outside mr mcmahon's office apparently they were in talks you know about adding kofi kingston to the wwe championship match the new day come up xavier woods and biggie and they're like bro what the hell are you doing that was over an hour ago that we defeated you know nakamura and rusev and we we're on the pre-show talking about this like get in there man we need an answer they go into vince mcmahon's office he's sitting there on the phone he stands up and they're like make this a triple threat match between Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, and Kofi Kingston. You know, he's been here for 11 years, yada, yada, yada. Vince McMahon agrees. He says, you know what? We'll make it a triple threat match, and that starts right now. Where The next matchup is going to be the WWE Championship. Triple threat, Kofi Kingston, Daniel Bryan, and Kevin Owens. So we cut down to the ring, and in fact, we have a triple threat match for the WWE Championship. Psych, we have, it got changed, apparently. Guy comes over the PA, you know, the announcer guy, and he says, this is a handicap match, and it's going to be Kofi Kingston. Kingston, uh, one on two versus Sheamus and Cesaro. So the bar come out and they are taking on Kofi Kingston in a one on two handicap match and Sheamus and Cesaro will be in the ring at the same time and they beat the hell out of Kofi. Kofi fights back a little bit. The crowd is chanting this is boring. Just letting this match have it. Nobody was interested in this and of course the bar win. Not only does this happen, Xavier Woods and Big E come out to help Kofi but then Rusev and Nakamura attack the New Day from behind 
wind and then of course the bar do win i don't know what the hell this was it was just whatever and it, i don't know man just just weird stuff it it, it just I, I don't know why they're booking kofi this way he's already an underdog and everybody believes it so i don't know why they're adding this it's like some vince russo type booking they're over booking it they're making it weird I don't know, but uh, yeah, this is what happened. Next up, guys, we have the Triple Threat Raw Tag Team Championship match between the champions Revival versus Chad Gable and Bobby Roode, or Glorious Roode, or Glorious Gable, or Ruble, or whatever you want to call them, versus Aleister Black and Ricochet, and this matchup was very nice. A very nice breath of fresh air between all of these men. Really good interactions, really good sequences. I mean, I could go on and on. There was one little botchy, messy part of this matchup when all the men were on the outside Ricochet went for a Hurricane Rana on I believe it was Scott Dawson off the turnbuckle and he was trying to throw him into everybody you know at the same time and I don't know man it just looked really wicked I think that Ricochet hit his head on the apron possibly it was really good stuff though I mean it was just such a breath of fresh air guys my god if they would just focus on the tag divisions both tag team matchups I will say on this show were good though I really enjoyed both the Raw and Smackdown Live tag team championship matches because it just seemed like they cared more about it. It wasn't just your formulaic garbage tag team match. So I really enjoyed both of them. And this one was probably the better one just because I was more invested, I'm sure. But I thought all, all three teams brought it, man. My God, it was just such good stuff. Besides that one little botchy messiness there on that one move but god the sequences the interactions use your tag teams man book them correctly and this is what we can have we can have great tag team wrestling i love this so much man the the revival do retain here but uh th these guys put on a show and i love this matchup but the revival do retain their tag titles as they should and i enjoyed this next up guys we had a surprise matchup announced by wwe prior to the show starting it was supposed to be Rey mysterio versus cn almost on the kickoff show thank god they didn't go with that they gave the brand new U.S. champion Samoa Joe a fatal four-way match between the four men, the former champion R-Truth. This was a pretty much rematch of the match that took place on SmackDown Live, which led to Samoa Joe becoming U.S. champion, and I'm super glad they did a rematch here. I think that it was important to have all four men on the main show. Not only do you get the former champion R-Truth with an opportunity to get his title back, but, you know, the brand new U.S. champion being featured on the show, Samoa Joe, and then, of course, putting Cien Almas and Rey Mysterio on the main card was important as well. So I, I appreciated this. Thank God this happened. Saw a little matchup. Nothing crazy over the top, but um, really great interactions. I mean, Rey Mysterio and Andrade conti continuing to kill it. Samoa Joe always impressive, and R-Truth is super duper underrated. So I liked all four of these men interacting. Thought it was a solid little fatal four-way matchup, which Samoa Joe did win, and I completely agree with this. I think this is a really good decision going into WrestleMania. I think that Samoa Joe versus John Cena would be a really good United States Championship match for WrestleMania 35. Hopefully that's what we get here coming out of this, but I love that Joe retained. Continue to book him strong with that U.S. title, and um, yeah, I enjoyed this stuff. Really good stuff, and cannot wait to see where he goes from here. Next up, guys, we had the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match between the Boston Hug Connection, which I hate that name, versus the terrible, atrocious tag team of Nia Jax and Tamina, and honestly guys, I had to take a massive dump during this match and I guarantee the massive dump pile was better than these two in the ring. Sasha Banks and Bayley deserve much better. I cannot stand Nia Jax as a talent. Tamina, both of them are not professional wrestlers. I, I think that they are completely overrated. I honestly do not know how they have jobs. I think it is their family heritage that got them those jobs and Bayley and Sasha Banks clearly need actual good wrestlers to have a great match at Mania. After the match, uh, Bayley Bailey and Sasha do retain. They defeat Nia Jax and Tamina, and then we cut over, and Nia Jax just beats the, or Nia Jax and Tamina start attacking Beth Phoenix on commentary, and then Natalia comes down for the save. I don't know what this was. I guess Natalia and Beth Phoenix are going to be a tag team headed into WrestleMania 35, so maybe we'll get Natalia and Beth Phoenix versus Bailey and Sasha, which is definitely a better match 
than Nia Jax and Tamina in a much better tag team. Way better talents overall than those two, but uh, Bailey and Sasha do retain, and I missed pretty much this entire... I pretty much missed, I think, over half this matchup, but I know that uh, it, it wasn't very good stuff. My brother was there to witness it, and he told me it, was, it wasn't very good, and I can just imagine. But yes, I guess we're going to get a WrestleMania 35 matchup between the Boston Hug Connection taking on Beth Phoenix and Natalya, so there's that. Next up, guys, we had a triple threat match for the WWE Championship. So what Vince McMahon said did come to pass. He said, you know what? We're changing the singles match for the WWE Championship into a triple threat match between Kevin Owens, Daniel Bryan, and... Mustafa Ali. So yes, yes, Mustafa Ali is wrestling now, not not Kofi Kingston. So Mustafa Ali comes out and the crowd is not having it, guys. They absolutely pooped on this man. I didn't like this position for Mustafa Ali because he is such a great talent and he is so good in the ring. I don't like that they put him in this position, but to be honest with you guys, I think by the end of this matchup, they were saying Kofi who? Because these three men put on a damn clinic, and I think that this was the best match on the main roster for all of 2019 this far. And if you guys have another match that should top this one in 2019, have you? So the last three months on the main roster, please let me know because I can't think of one. I think that this was the best main roster match uh, so far, this year, I, I love this match to death. All three men brought it. We had great sequences. We had great pacing. All three men, you know, putting it on the line. Near falls, excitement. And I swear, guys, by the end of it, nobody even thought about Kofi Kingston. You had, like, some slight... Co like, at the beginning of this match, everybody was wanting Kofi. But I swear, by the end of it, you didn't have many people really even thinking about Kofi Kingston. But... This has me wondering, like, where the hell they're going with it. I know that um, Daniel Bryan did retain. Mustafa Ali got hit out of the air on, like, a springboard. He was going to jump onto Bryan, and Bryan hit him with the flying knee right in the face. And, yes, one, two, three, but just great stuff here. I don't know where they're going, though. I, I really do not know. I guess Kofi is going to be getting his match at Mania because these thing, the thing with the bar made no sense to me. I don't know why they... I guess just another swerve and just another just obstacle that Kofi has to overcome. But I don't know why they're doing that. That may, that just doesn't make sense to me. Why does he have to do all of these things? It's just it's very reminiscent of the Becky Lynch storyline. It's like it's like the same exact deal. I don't know why they're doing that. But anyways, really good match. I love this. My boy Kevin Owens looked absolutely fantastic here, and um, it, it was just really good stuff, man. Hats off to all three men. Mustafa Ali continuing to kill it. One of my favorites out there. Just, just great stuff. Daniel Bryan does carry the WWE title into WrestleMania 35. Next up, guys, we had the match between my girl Becky Lynch taking on Charlotte Flair, and if she won, she would be put into the WWE Raw Women's Championship main event at WrestleMania 35 between Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. Guys, I really don't know why this match is even happening. You know, they've really overbooked this. Becky Lynch, first of all, won the Royal Rumble. Then, of course, Ronda Rousey uh, she attacked Ronda Rousey multiple times, got suspended, she had the knee injury, uh, Ronda laid down the title, picked the title back up, made this matchup happen. It was just really overbooked and stupid when they could have just let things happen naturally, keep these girls apart, don't feature them every single week on Raw and SmackDown. You could have had something very special here, but they totally ruined it like WWE does. But anyways, Becky Lynch wins after Ronda Rousey comes out of nowhere and attacks her, leading to disqualification, and now your main event for WrestleMania 35 is set. This is your triple threat. Becky Lynch wins. Really anti Climatic, really just dumb and weird, and I don't know, man. I hope these women aren't on TV at all until WrestleMania 35. That's I'm I'm legit. I would not be disappointed. That would legit make this thing a lot better. And yeah, Becky Lynch wins due to disqualification and interference by Ronda Rousey. Next up, we had an Elias segment. We've had multiple of these. I think this is the third and final Elias segment. He you know craps on the crowd like Elias does. His same old shtick over and over. Out comes Lacey Evans, and Lacey Evans does her same old shtick, so both of these just doing the same ish every single night they are on television. And then, uh, you know, Elias is just talking, or not talking, he's just in there in the ring looking at Lacey Evans, and then... 
RKO out of nowhere by Randy Orton. He comes out of nowhere like my boy does. The Viper strikes, and I honestly do not know why he would attack Elias. I mean, really, that makes no sense. But anyways, Randy Orton just comes out of nowhere and takes out uh, Elias. And I love Randy Orton. You guys know, one of my favorites. So I, I like this segment a lot as far as just, you know, a good old, a good old RKO out of nowhere. And then out of nowhere again, AJ Styles comes in with a phenomenal forearm, and AJ Styles stands tall. So it looks like we are going to be getting AJ Styles versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania 35. What a great match. I can't wait for it. I've been waiting for this fantasy matchup for a long time now. So this is something that I'm definitely looking forward to, and I cannot wait to see where this thing goes. Maybe they'll get some good build leading into Mania, but this match is definitely going to be happening. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Shield reunion, the Roman Reigns in-ring return. We had the Shield, Seth Rollins, my man, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Bobby Trashley, Drew McIntyre, and Trash Corbin. And guys, we all knew how this match was going to go down. It was pretty much just a Shield reunion, Roman reunion, just beat the hell out of these three mid-carters and get the hell out of here. Um, I would put Drew McIntyre, and I think Drew McIntyre is easily a main event talent, but you know, Bobby Trashley and Trash Corbin are, are easy jobber level. But, um, you know, this match was pretty cliche. We all knew how it would go. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, they pretty much beat up on him. I mean, it, was, it wasn't just, it was just so cliche and boring. We knew how it would go. You know, nothing, nothing special at all. I get, you know, if you're a shield mark, that's cool, whatever. I'm a big Seth Rollins fan. I like Roman Reigns. I've never been a huge supporter of Dean Ambrose, but, you know, it is what it is. I've never been a massive just shield guy. Just, I don't know. It's just, after they, you know, they push it over and over and over again, and they reunite over and over and over again, it's just, it loses the special feel. It feels completely forced, and um, whatever. One last time, that's fine. I'm ready to move on now. No more shield no more nothing. Let's get Seth Rollins into this Universal Championship run. Let's get this title off Brock Lesnar, and let's ride away. Overall, guys, I enjoyed Fastlane. I mean, I didn't really care for the main event. I didn't care for Charlotte and Ronda. I wasn't too big on Asuka and Mandy, but I liked both tag team matches. I liked the uh, the triple threat match was absolutely bomb. I, I loved the crap out of that match, but one match or two matches doesn't make an entire pay-per-view. Um, you know, it, it, it does suck that, uh, you know, and then, and then we had the women's tag team title match that wasn't very good. So, I mean, Fastlane was just eh at best. Uh, there wasn't, you know, anything immaculate besides the triple threat. I really enjoyed that match, but that is pretty much your Fastlane 2019 review and results, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy the review. If you did, comment down below what your thoughts were. Again, uh, stay stay tuned to the end of the clip for like a special little thing. Uh, you guys will get a kick out of that, but thank you guys for watching. I'm excited to see where we go from here leading into Mania. Excited to get this Mania card out, see what we got going on. Can't wait for it. We're going to see. Finn Balor goes one-on-one -on -one with Bobby Trash tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw for the Intercontinental Championship. Is my boy going to retain? He absolutely should, and he should bring the Demon to Mania. I don't know who he fights, though. Who's he going to take on? That's a very important question going into WrestleMania, but thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.